gonna start with steak because that's the main event and I think the oh god I lost it hey 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 what's up everybody it is Uncle Mad here and tonight we are doing another cook on the Blackstone griddle we recently did a full breakfast cook on the Blackstone griddle did the whole meal on the Blackstone so I figured you know we got a nice pleasant night weather wise that's your Nashville weather update let's do a full steak dinner completely cooked on the Blackstone griddle see how that turns out see if we can make it happen that's the plan we'll see how the plan turns out there's airplanes flying overhead the pool is flowing in the background everything is happening but steaks are going on the grill all foods going on the grill it's gonna be delicious I can't promise that but I hope that's how it turns out in the end so stay tuned to find out all right start with the veggies first they're gonna take a little bit longer to cook than the steaks the steaks are pretty much like a 10 minute one flip process. We're doing potatoes. I got these seasoned up and tossed in the bag with salt, pepper, garlic blend that I make myself. It's airplane flying over. It's like half salt, quarter pepper, quarter garlic powder. And freaking flyer on the channel, Richard Greenberg, suggested doing a little paprika potatoes after our breakfast one, brunch one, whatever you call that video. So we got a little paprika in there too. Broccoli, got that, the standard potato, or garlic, salt, pepper blend. Corn on the cob, corn on the cob, same thing, salt, pepper, garlic blend, but the trick here is wrap it in foil, coat the corn on the cob in butter, then to prevent, prevent it from scalding, throw, I wrap it all up in a little bit of a wet paper towel to keep it a little bit moist while it cooks inside the foil. So this kind of roasts more than grills, but we throw the potatoes on first because they're probably gonna take the longest to cook. Bing bong, bing bong, bing bong, bing bong. Little oil ski. Potatoes are down. Potatoes have been going for a little bit now. I'm gonna shift them back to the back. I've kind of got it on like medium-ish low heat here because I've gone between high, medium, low with the potatoes, and when I had it on a little bit too high, they scald a little too quickly, so I'm keeping it about on the lowish tin, but I'm cooking them longer, so low and slow. It's a barbecue thing, not a potato thing, but I think I had applies here. I'm gonna put the broccoli down now, because it'll take a little less time, but same kind of thing, cooking it lower, heat. I'm gonna put the corn on or on the same side where I'm going to have the meat and I'm going to put it to the top of the grill because it tends to not get as hot at the top of the grill so kind of same thing lowish let it cook for a while all the veggies are down now everything is working magic is happening here on the Blackstone I say this in every cooking video that we do but the biggest thing we've learned from doing like Blue Apron is that you just keep salting. You, never, you always think like, before I, we did Blue Apron, I was always like, oh, don't want to put too much salt on anything. No, there's never too much salt. Just keep salting. So we seasoned the potatoes, we seasoned the broccoli. We did all that before we started. It's cooking. Some of that's probably going to cook off. So as we saute it up, we'll just put some more salt on just like that. All right, so one additional thing we're doing beyond the veggies and the steak, we're gonna make a sauce. I'm of the school of thought that like, I, I've always heard like, if the steak is flavored right, if it's cooked right, you don't need a sauce. But I mean, if you make a good sauce and it's good, it's good. Just as a sauce fan, she likes sauces. So we're gonna do a blue cheese sauce because that's kind of my favorite sauce when I go steak sauce. I, for whatever reason, like, I, and it's a recent thing that I've come to blue cheese sauces where I'm like, they taste pretty good. I think they eat enhanced steaks certain degree I do like like a nice Bernays if I'm doing like a filet mignon but I do like I do like ribeye New York strip is more my cut of steak so we're gonna do a blue cheese sauce it's also one of the easier ones to do because it's three ingredients heavy cream blue cheese Worcestershire sauce really simple really easy to cook I've never tried to cook it on the Blackstone so that'll be a nice little kind of wrinkle nice little trick here if you remember if you watched the brunch video when I tried to do kind of like the gravy sauce on. I couldn't quite get it to boil. I don't know if that's like a, I don't know where the heat zones are or something like that. So we'll see how that works this time. But we're gonna we're gonna try to make a blue cheese sauce on there. So the next thing we need to do to do that is to boil a little bit of heavy cream. So we're gonna give that a shot. We'll see how this goes. This might not work. It didn't work last time when I tried to cook 
pan kind of sauce, gravy, whatever you want to call it, on the thing, but I think I've got the heat zones worked out a little bit better, so we'll see how this goes this time. All right, so the veggies are coming along nicely. The sauce is simmering. The corn is roasting. It's about time to put the steaks down. We're gonna start out with Jesta's filet. She is more of a filet person, as I mentioned. I am a ribeye person, so I've got two ribeyes, one filet. I'm not eating both ribeyes tonight. I'm actually, they came in two packs, so I was gonna cook one ribeye for tonight, save one, put it in breakfast Sunday, like either some breakfast tacos or like a steak omelet, something delicious like that, so. One of the nice benefits of one of those nice little ribeye two-packs is like, oh, you don't like a ribeye? Ah, two for me. <laughs> I've got breakfast plans for Sunday, so that's what we're going to do. One thing we learned last time, I, sh it's, I shouldn't say learned last time, this should be an obvious thing, because the filet is a little bit thicker of a cut, it takes a little bit longer. I tend to do ribeyes for like seven, eight minutes top, like three, four side to get the sear, flip it, two to three minutes on the other side, done. Last time we did filet filets for just a... Uh, came out a little on the very rare side. So I'm gonna put hers down first, get it a little extra cooked than mine. So we're gonna start hers down right now. And oh, one thing I do with sticks, this is kind of my trick. I stole this from Alton Brown, so this is not my trick necessarily, but I saw a video where he was like, he was out of oil. And I may have mentioned this on a previous video, but if not, here it is for the first time. He was out of oil and he's looking for something to do to kind of coat his steaks for the grilling. And it was like, well, mayonnaise is oil-based, so it essentially does the same thing oil would do, but it also has that little extra flavor you get from mayonnaise. So he would, he started coating his steaks in mayonnaise before he cooked them. So that's what I do now. Coat them in mayonnaise. My go-to seasoning is always Montreal steak. It's just a pretty standard seasoning. That's for the crust side. Once we flip, we'll just go basic easy salt and pepper. Usually comes out pretty good. I think so anyway. All right, things are coming in along nicely. The broccoli looks great right now. The potatoes looking nice and, I can't remember the word I wanted to use right here, but they're not burned, so yet. Just a steak is down, gonna flip it shortly. Corn is roasting back there. The sauce is coming along well very nicely. I think this is like a better option than gravy because I didn't need to get it to a full boil. I just needed it warm to simmer to kind of melt the blue cheese. So this might have been the perfect thing to have to cook on the Blackstone as opposed to like something where you needed a full blown boil. All right, so we gave Jesta's steak a little bit of a head start. Now it's time to put mine down. Now, like I said, my go-to on steaks is I do the crust side, the kind that I'm really getting a crust on with Montreal steak seasoning, and then I just hit the back side, simple salt and pepper, because I only do one flip. I do down three, four, five minutes on one side, flip three, four, five minutes on the other side, salt and pepper. Always more salt, like we've been talking about. All right, time to finish up. Steaks have been resting for a minute. We're gonna slice and dice. Oh yeah, that turned out perfect. Much better cook on Jessica's filet this time than the last time I tried to do this. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, if the steak tastes as good as my fingers when I just licked them did, then we are in good shape. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Not normally one to toot my own horn, but toot, toot, toot. That was uh, Michael PSA's. But yeah, let's see how this all tastes. All right, one final trip, trip, trick before we eat. I always grind up a little sea salt, like a little finishing salt on top. Give that extra little flavor. Like I said, salt it, salt it, salt it. Time for the taste test. I'm gonna start with steak, because that's the main event, and I think the, oh God, I lost it. <laughs> lost the piece right away. Cook came out pretty good. About the temp I like. Let's try a bite without the sauce first, because like I said, I'm a let the steak speak kind of guy, but I do like sauces, so steak first.
Mmm. That steak is talking, and I'm liking its language. I liking the way it speaks. It's speaking of my language, if you know what I'm saying. I like the way the steak tastes. But we'll try a bite with this sauce, because Jesta is the sauce queen. It's her title. She's been known as that online. She once told me in high school they called her the sauce queen. I never told you that, ever. You specifically said, in high school, my title was the sauce queen, so you better make some sauce. All right, steak with the blue cheese sauce. Bone apple teas, if I forgot to say that earlier. For the sauce queen herself, tribute to you. We pay tribute to the sauce queen. That's the best blue cheese sauce I've ever made. It is. You kind of I killed that one. Couple of times, and this one was I really killed good. that one. That one's the best one. I think maybe because I cooked it on the blackstone. Slower. It was slower. It didn't overheat. It didn't burn any at all. That sauce is fire. What a good job by me. Corn on the cob time. Wow. Ah. I just taste like corn on the cob. It's good though. I'm gonna chop a little broccoli. Hey. Oh god, that's really good broccoli. That's borderline perfect. It's still got the crunch, it's not overcooked, it's not burned, it's not singed. Potatoes. Made way too much food though. Your mom made way too much food. Wow. I'm just gonna say it. And Moo Moo, you can agree, you can disagree. This might be the best meal I've ever made. Give Mumu a taste on her, on her drugs. Mumu is allergic to everything and she will die if I feed her anything. They're gonna have meat. This is a 20 star meal. Jesta, your thoughts? My steak is really good. The sauce is amazing. Um, way better than the last time you made me a filet. Um, like, I agree with what you said. This is probably the best blue cheese sauce you've ever made. I just think you made way too much food. <laughs> you overdid it. <laughs> Luxury problems, am I right? <laughs> Alright, Justice, so I have a question for you, because I just had this pop in my head. Is corn simultaneously the least versatile vegetable, also being like Fairly good to eat. That's the most random thought I've ever heard. Like I don't. Know no, I was eating that corn on the cob, and I was like, "This tastes really good." Okay. But I feel like in all the attempts I've ever made to cook corn, corn has never been like crazy elite. Like this corn is so much better than the other corn. Like you know, we've done street corn. We've say, done. We've had street corn. Street corn is so much better than any other mm. corn. I don't know. Then today it's still corn. It's corn. It's corn. It's got the juice. It's got corn and mayonnaise. Huh. I don't know. I agree. To disagree. All right. So in addition to the delicious meal I have cooked tonight on the Blackstone Grill, I wanted to add one little extra little kind of review kind of thing into this video because I recently learned that secretly, covertly, without telling anybody, PepsiCo got rid of Sierra Mist. Just they didn't tell anybody. They didn't tell anybody, they just did it. They just randomly replaced Sierra Mist, which is the Pepsi version of Sprite, with a beverage called Starry. Inexplicably, no, no answer, no, no reason, no rhyme or reason to this. Didn't tell anybody it was happening. All of a sudden, there's this new soda that you see in the stores called Starry. Now, I'm not a soda drinker. I only drink healthy beverages like water and coffee. That's it. And Gatorade? Nope. Gatorade sometimes. And beer? But Gatorade messes with the enamel on your teeth, so I don't drink it that often. And beers? Beer is terrible. It's high in carbs. It makes you fat and bloated. I don't drink any alcohol unless it's for the content on the channel. Oh, yeah. Not a drinker. No soda. Gatorade when I need electrolytes for my body if my body has been overworked but not that often although I did like 
there was a three year stretch from like 2003 to 2008 where the only thing I drank legit was fierce grape Gatorade. <laughs> and my teeth have probably been wrecked from that. But Jessica loves soda. She just taps it into the vein. So when I told her that Ceramis was gone, she was like, about to storm the Capitol and do a January 6th about the whole thing. So I was like, well, there's nobody better to review the new Sierra Mist alternative story than Jesta's. So here comes Jesta's review of Starry. First of all, three, two, one, action. You scared Mama. First of all, sound rolling. First of all, Matthew is a liar. I am this is get to the star review. This is what people are here for. Drink the drink. I'm not a huge soda drinker, but here's Starry. Oh, okay. <laughs> the only type of soda that I drink. I'm not going to do this if you continue with your shenanigans. Okay, so one of the only sodas I like, aside from root beer, is Sprite. I do not like Sierra Mist. I will drink Sierra Mist if it's all that's available, if it's only Pepsi products. But Sierra Mist tasted like diet soda. I was not a huge fan. This, this tastes like Sprite. This is amazing. This is actually a, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm done trying to you. jump in. I'm, I'm part done of the, with you. I'm part of this. No, I'm done with you. you can final thoughts. Dog. Your final thoughts. My final thoughts are... <laughs> See, look what you did. This little gap between the house and the grill area always has the like best spider webs. I don't know how much the camera can pick it up, but you always get big fancy spider webs right between the grill and this area. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. What a delicious meal that was. Like I don't like to shoot my own horn, but like I kind of knocked it out of the park on that one. When I do these cooking videos, I'm not trying to do like, you know, let me show you how to cook. Let me show you how to do all the things. I'm a gourmet chef. I more or less take things from other chefs that I watch online. Because I watch a lot. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of people that cook on Blackstone grills. I'm pointing this way because my Blackstone's out that door. I'm kind of taking things from them. Like I, as I mentioned, the Alton Brown thing of using the mayonnaise and the steaks. That's something I saw from him. Like, But I'm just trying to like say like, Cooking is not that hard. It's like, it's easy if you could just find the few little tricks, the few little tips that you need to get through it. So, not actually trying to like teach anybody how to do anything because I am not any kind of gourmet chef, but you know, that was a relatively easy thing to do at home tonight that we made into like a delicious meal. So, if you can follow along, if you can do it yourself, more power to you. If you just like to watch other people cook, watch the eat food. If you're like a, it's like a mukbang thing. I don't know what that word means, but I've heard it used before. So be it. Anyway, that's it. Delicious meal. Starry apparently is better than Sierra Mist, so that turned out pretty good for all those Sierra Mist heads out there who are watching the video. Oh, he just joined us on the couch. Good night. Good luck. We'll see you at Taco Bell.